Are you sure that you are really who you think you are? There are so many parts of your personality that are layers of things that you have created in order to either facilitate who you think you are or facilitate your existence in the world that you exist in. You probably have limiting beliefs in your self-image that allow you to persist in being the type of person that you are. So you have a rhetoric in your head that keeps going over the fact that you're an unlucky person or you're a lazy type of person or you'll never get to what you want to in life. It's because you've trained yourself to notice the things in your reality that say, yes, she is right or yes, he is right because of these things. Our brain wants to prove ourselves right above anything else because it's a feeling of comfort that you have to know that your inner world resembles the reality. So if I think if I, I, I'm an unfortunate person, that's just who I am. That's just my reality. Your brain will go, okay, she's unfortunate. Let's prove her right. This happened. That happened. She didn't get a parking spot. This tragedy happened. All this stuff. It's going to prove you right if you let it. So in order to change your self-image to facilitate growth and a creation, a manifestation of your future reality, you need to radically change who you think it is that you are. If you don't see yourself as a different person, you will keep repeating the loops that you've learned yourself to believe you have. You've made yourself too comfortable in this life. You haven't set boundaries. You have golden child syndrome where you were so good and so convenient and so obedient just to please your parents. And a lot of cultures we come from, that is what we are. In the Eastern European culture that I come from, you had to be good and proper and listen and all that stuff. That is not conducive to being able to stand up for yourself and set boundaries. A lot of you would feel the same. If you have a knowledge of being yourself for who you are, you need to break out of that paradigm and create a new reality so that then your world resembles who you are inside because you're over here trying to manifest and trying to make things happen and trying to, you know, move forward in the world when you are still in your head the person you always were. You need to change who you understand yourself to be first. Which brings me first onto the sponsor of this video. I want to thank Blinkist who... I've been a fan of for a long time so this is a whole circle turnaround situation where they wanted to sponsor a video thank you it will facilitate you in aiding this video to to help you Blinkist is a service where you can read over 5,500 books on self-development non-fiction books on progress mind psychology all that juicy stuff that you and I are into but this is the kicker. Blinkist breaks down the book into the key concepts that the book consists of and serves them to you in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Do you understand how amazing that is? So this book that I'm reading at the moment by Dr. Joe Dispenza, I got it down in 15 minutes, breaking the habit of being yourself, which is what this video is about. How can you move forward if you're still living in the paradigm of who you think you are, which might not be the reality of who you are? You need to change your self-image and self-perception first. This book, and Dr. Joe Dispenza in general, is incredible when it comes to things like meditation, which I'll mention in this video later. I am not, I am not too good at this part of it. I find it hard to let my mind rest and to essentially meditate, but get this book on Blinkist you will understand more about his methods and we will discuss mine, but it is very, very important to this whole process. If you go to my link in bio, you will get 25% off a premium membership. You will get two for the price of one, so you can give it to a friend. Your friend or your family or whatever can also use the service and you can link books and share them. It is like a whole amazing book club situation going on. Very useful, very amazing. And um, you'll get 25% off if you use that link and you'll get seven free days trial. So utilize it. It's so good to condensate and compress what it is these books are about, especially if you're going to invest your precious, precious time into actually reading the full length version. Look at the key ideas. You can listen to it or you can read it and take it from there. It's important to note, back to our topic, that your limiting beliefs shape your reality and who you are. 
But what we hardly ever discuss is why did you develop these limiting beliefs? Yes, you might have had a really traumatic, difficult childhood. Yes, you might have not grown up in the way that you wanted to. All these things might be true. But the reason you're not breaking up with those beliefs might be because they're serving you in some ways. A lot of people who are stuck in the victim mentality like to be felt sorry for. They like to be mollycoddled and they like to feel witnessed and noticed. It's like you will try and save them. You will try and break down the doors of the castle, slay the dragon. And then the last part is you just need to get into the room where they're locked, but they're holding the door on the other side because they don't want to be saved because this idea and the mental image of themselves as a victim serves them. Is that you? Do you like to speak a rhetoric again and again over and over about how life's not fair and how you don't get all the right things? You need to stop. We need to cut it out because you were given one life and you are going to utilize it if that is the last thing you're going to do. You are going to see how far we can take this thing, this movie that is our life. You're going to be fully the main character and we're going to see how far we can spin this because you deserve to do this. All your ancestors didn't come before you for you to just sit there and hold the door when people are trying to rescue you. You need to rescue yourself. You need to understand that your thoughts and your emotions shape your reality. I always was so confused about the notion of if you want to be happy, just be happy. I was like, how can I be happy? Tragedies are happening, this and that and the other thing. But the truth is you can't change some of the realities that are happening. You just can be the type of person that you are. People have noticed throughout history, throughout time, evolution, that those people who make the best out of the little things they have actually amplify and grow. You need to create a gratitude habit to learn the skill set of noticing all your opportunities. Because once you want to buy a red car, you suddenly notice that everyone around you has a red car. Your brain cannot take in all the information that is offered in the world all the time. Your brain is a supercomputer, which you say right brain. Now we are noticing red cars. Why do we have a gratitude diary where we write the things we are grateful for every day? Not because it's a magical thing. Well, I guess it is magic, but because we want to train our brain to see and notice the good things. Why do we want to do that? Because the more you notice the opportunities and the good things that are happening in your life, the more you can utilize them. I want to buy a red car. I see so many red cars. I want to be successful and a millionaire. I see the paths to how to become that. If all I'm thinking about is how I'm poor, I'm not seeing the opportunities. And this is coming from a person who's been that. I've been that. I've grown up with a single mum with no English, her or I, in a country eating cereal with no milk. So listen to me. You need to start focusing on opportunities as opposed to a lack thereof. Because your brain is a super machine that will find the opportunities once you let yourself see them. How do you do it? Gratitude. You need to create a journal and write down all the good things that happen during the day. Meanwhile, with the bad things, what you resist persists. It will persist if you resist it, if you fight it, which is why I often say to women who are like fighting a behavior of a man they're with, instead of constantly fighting that behavior, notice the good behavior that he's doing. It's the most backward thing to say to advise to someone, but it bloody works. Trust me, it works. When you start to speak light into someone, they start to do the right thing unless they're the most far gone case in the world, in, in which case they'll just fall away into the ether as they should. But, but you need to have blind focus on the goodness and disregard the negative looping that is going on in your mind to change your self image, who you are, what your reality is. People are now good to you. People want to do good things for you. You are now good to yourself. When I had a child and had a surgery at the same time, love that for me, in terms of like body, I was stuck in a loop where I did not see myself as the fit type of person who had fitness, slimness, a type of body I want. People want different bodies, but that's the type of body I wanted. I was like, how? Googling all these things, how? I'm sure you've seen my weight loss video on this channel. And suddenly it clicked on me, my identity. I needed to change my self image from somebody who doesn't know to somebody who knows. Now this is really gonna, you're gonna really, your brain's either gonna understand it straight away or struggle to understand it, because I didn't understand it, but I finally did. You don't need to be the person who's dieting, in the case that I'm talking about. You don't need to be the person who's trying. You need to wake up one day and completely shift your reality into the person who already knows. Say to your brain, if I knew what to do, what would I do? 
if I knew what to do, what would I do? Because your brain knows. It knows a ton of information that you don't know that it knows because it's been picking up throughout your life, picking it up, picking it up, picking it up, picking it up. But you're focusing on the fact that I don't know what to do. I don't know what to eat. I don't know how to be fit. I don't know how to lose weight. Yeah. You've been focusing on all that. So your brain is affirming that. Yeah, we don't know what to do. Yeah, we don't know what to do. We're walking around not knowing what to do. We're so confused. We don't know what to do. Change your identity. I suddenly knew. I suddenly knew. Oh my God. Shit. Whole foods. And no processed food. And keto, for me, being a Nordic person, works the best. I just knew. Two months, 10 kilos lost. The hell? How? I changed my identity. It wasn't even hard not to eat junk because I was like, I'm that healthy type of person who doesn't eat that. Thankful for that, love it for me. It lapses, identity changes. And I noticed that um, I'm in the least happy state in my body when I guess it lapses and I'm not in that identity anymore. And then I start the struggle, oh, 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 should I eat the, the chips and the fries? Should I, sh uh, uh, uh. no, you shouldn't. What good is it doing for you? Honestly, and I'm pretty strict on this. A lot of people are like, well, love yourself, eat the junk. I'm not sure if that's a self-love format for me. It's still a question. No, in fact, I know I have a knowledge. That's not self-love for me, maybe for you. You need to crowd out what it is that you don't want as opposed to try and get rid of it. You need to focus. Let's stick with the eating thing. Instead of being like, I'm not gonna eat this, 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 this. You're gonna be like, do you know what? I love myself. I'm the type of person who loves my body. I'm the type of person who wants to do better for themselves. I'm the type of person who wants to live a long time and play with my children. I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna mix my greens. I'm gonna have all this colorful salad because that's what needs to be done. I'm gonna have these quality organic meats, whatever. Whatever it is you wanna do. I don't know you. I don't know exactly what you need, but you know, you know, you need to crowd out the bad stuff. Stop focusing on the bad stuff. Stop thinking, oh my God, I eat so much junk. Oh my God, I can never. You can, you can. Wake up and decide and change your self-image. You are now the person who knows and you are now the person who, instead of thinking, I can't eat these fries, I can't eat these chips, whatever country you're from, whatever you call it, think, I need a salad today. I need this gorgeous salmon fillet because I need my omega-6, omega-3. Omega, whatever, right? That's how we need to be coming at it, from self-love. You need to create an idea and a self-image that you are the type of person, because why not you, that can create any reality that they want. Just wake up tomorrow and try it. Just decide that that's you. Decide, and I hear you, I hear your brain going, no, no, that's not me, I can't, that's not a reality. These kind of videos are just, you know, people talking like that, but it can't happen. It can, it can be you, it's many people. You can be one of those people. Why not? Why can't you be one of those people? Why can't things happen for you? Your brain sees what it is you train it to notice. That's the key to it. You need to lean into what makes you feel good as opposed to what makes you feel blocked. So what made me feel good in the whole weight loss health journey is knowing that I'm fueling my body with these amazing things as opposed to things I can't eat. So I totally stopped thinking about things I can't eat and started to almost to the level of obsessed to be like, oh my God, I can't wait to eat this. I can't wait to eat this, to research food, to listen to podcasts about like food and like interesting things to really fall in love with it. Um, I've heard a lot of people who break out of eating um, disorders, which isn't what this video is about, but they, they break out of it from a passion for food as opposed to trying to escape from it. And that is a big thing. You need a positivity mindset. A growth mindset is what it's called as opposed to a negative mindset. A growth mindset is where things are possible for you, for anyone, at any time, and you can make it happen. And that is the first thing that needs to shift. Before you sit there and you manifest some kind of reality, you need to manifest a new version of yourself. From tomorrow, you're gonna to be 43, you're gonna be 18, you're gonna be 28. That's a whole new you. That's a whole new you. I got it in my head that my life is in seven cycles. My last birthday, I was like, this is where my next cycle begins. I grew my TikTok to over half a million within five months. I launched a podcast which has charted. I am not saying this to like show off or anything, but I just decided I'm from this birthday for the next seven years. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next seven years. It's gonna be even better, but like seven year cycles. That's what I decided. You need to create a belief for yourself that is unbreakable and that you will live with and believe. 
unbreakably. The book that I mentioned earlier via uh, Blinkist, uh, it goes into meditation. That is not something I can sit here and teach you because um, let alone being an expert, I'm not even a practitioner. I don't know the power that it has, but I do believe that meditation isn't what everyone always says it is and that it's a certain practice you've got to let go, brain, da da da. I believe I've reached a level of some sort of meditation, I guess it's my own, but a visualization and emotional connection to the ideas of what I want to happen. I, I, I lie down before I go to sleep and I feel into the reality that I want to happen. I don't know, a feeling of independence, um, happiness with my child, success in my endeavors, feel into them emotionally and that is my meditation, but Dr. Joe Dispenza will give you more. He's got lots of books on that. The key to take away from this is your brain will create the pathway to close the gap between your belief and your reality. So if right now this is your reality and this is your belief of who you are, it's cohesive to who you are. So if you think you're a piece of garbage that don't, doesn't deserve anything and you can't do anything and all this stuff, your brain has matched it and now, oh, this is where the brain feels good, where your belief matches your reality. If you can overpower yourself and change your belief to where you're this person and your belief, your soul and your spirit and your mind is stronger than any body and any reality, right? So your belief is here. Your brain has no choice but to pull up to where you are. It will pull up and it will create pathways. You will start noticing opportunities. You will start to carry yourself differently. You will lose that weight or you will dress differently or you will gain that weight if that is what you want or you will present yourself differently in order to match your self-concept, your self-image. That's what's going to happen. Lastly, a lot of ways that we see ourselves and our self-belief needs to be dismantled. It comes from a pain point in childhood or some way that you became convenient or some way that you learned to survive, to disappear in the background, to not require for much, to not set boundaries, to not appear in this world as a person of presence and someone who deserves to take up space. Um, even down to the fact that what we were talking about earlier, weight loss, a lot of times people hold weight in order to protect themselves from the world. If you notice a lot of people who carry weight and they don't know why, are people who are overly kind, hence the stereotype can sometimes prevail that, and they are trying to protect themselves from hurtful things in the world, and it is hurtful. So you almost need to fortify yourself in your self-knowledge and self-concept and let go of the fact that the world is going to hurt you. It might, but you will survive. You will be fine. You can do this because you're going to change your self-image and you're going to appear in this world as the person you are, you are meant to be. And you will see the pathways. The world will open its arms to you, I promise. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Go in the description box, look at Blinkist, get your 25% off. Thank you for sponsoring. And uh, check out my podcast, 20 Feminine Energy Principles, is also in the bio. It's all down there. Love you, last like Jay Tots, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.